Consolidated Financial Statements, Part 1. This is Ken Boyd, the owner of St. Louis Test Preparation. Here's our email and phone number. We're on Facebook at St. Louis Test Prep. And our Skype number, especially for those internationally, you can contact me on Skype, Ken Boyd, STL, all one word. So we need to first define consolidation. Consolidation is the process of presenting the assets and the liabilities for two companies together as if they were one entity. Officially, they're not one entity yet, but for the purposes of a statement reader, we need to report them as one entity. And then the question is why? The reason we do a consolidation is that the stock held in an acquiring company, which I'll call the parent throughout here, gives a controlling interest in the acquired company, which I'm going to call a subsidiary. So what do we mean in the last bullet point by controlling interest? That's where the parent owns 50% or more of the outstanding voting shares of the subsidiary, which means that the parent can dictate policy to that subsidiary. I would point you to some of the earlier videos we did in finance and intermediate accounting on common stock, outstanding mean shares held by the public, Voting shares means that you can vote on major corporate decisions. I've gone over to Excel with, and put up a quick formula on how we value the assets and the liabilities when there's an acquisition. So in my example here in bold, I've said if the parent company acquires 80% of a subsidiary, and I'm going to say that the asset in question is a delivery truck that they use in their business. The book value is 18000 which is what the asset's going to be on the books of the subsidiary. The fair value of that delivery truck is 25000 And the parent acquires the delivery truck as an acquisition cost of 30000 We break that difference between the acquisition cost and the book value into two terms. The first term is revaluation, revaluation increment. Increment can mean increase. And what we're saying here with the $7,000 is we're going to account for the difference between the fair book value and the book value and call that a revaluation increment. It can also be a decrement with a D. We'll see that later. Goodwill you might be more familiar with is the difference between the fair value and the acquisition cost. So it's basically isolating the fact that we're paying more than, book, than fair value for the asset. If we add the two numbers together, the goodwill and the revaluation, we get a total valuation differential of 12000 the difference between the book value of the asset at 80% and the acquisition cost. Before we go to the balance sheet, let's talk more about when a consolidation is required. It's required in a case where the parent company has a new asset account called investment in subsidiary. And I put subsidiary in parentheses, it would be the name of the company. And the question is, what's the value that we put on the parent company's books when they invest in the subsidiary? We just went through that with that valuation formula. What we do next is create parallel balance sheets. As of the date of the acquisition, we have the parent company's balance sheet and subsidiary side by side. And the last step we're going to do eventually is make adjustments between the balance sheets. Jumping back to Excel, what I've done is, is put the balance sheets, here's the parent's balance sheet, and next to it the subsidiary. And what I would point out in italics is we have an asset account called investment in the subsidiary, which means that the parent on the date of acquisition that's not shown here, paid $150,000 for their percentage ownership in the subsidiary. And you'll notice that that investment in subsidiary, in subsidiary is only an asset on the parent's books. There is no asset on the subsidiary books. The rest of the balance sheet is pretty standard. We've got the normal listing of assets, liabilities, stockholders equity. One more piece of information we're going to need to do this process is to do the consolidation. We're going to take some selected asset values 
and we need to put down the same information that we saw in the valuation formula spreadsheet before. So we've got inventory, land, equipment, and a patent that happens to be on the books of the subsidiary. And these are value, these assets are assets on the balance sheet of the subsidiary. So these numbers come from the subsidiary company books. So we have current values, which can also be called fair market value for all the assets here. We have their book value, that is how the assets are listed on the books of the subsidiary company. For example, we flip over to inventory and subsidiary, we notice a $40,000 asset. That's the book value inventory on the subsidiary books, 40000 So that 40000 is what translates over to this report under book value. So we have various book values listed. And then we have remaining life in a number of years, and I do point out on land that that life for the land is indefinite. The land does not depreciate. What we will see when we do the adjustments to the consolidation is, is that we're going to have an investment in land, investment in subsidiary accounts, and then we're going to use the asset values on this spreadsheet to make adjustments in a third column here and then in a fourth column, we're going to come, come up with the consolidated asset values, which are going to include assets of the parent, assets of the subsidiary, and then a column where we have adjustments. That is the end of Consolidation 1 for a complete course on some of our accounting. We have free one-hour sessions on GoToMeeting.com called Essential Topics in Management Accounting. We also have one for cost. YouTube channel is Ken Boyd STL, all one word. For individual tutoring and live chat sessions, here's my website. You can also contact me via email, my phone number, and you saw the Skype address on the first page. If you can email me at a date and a time, we can talk by Skype if we need to. Thanks very much, and we'll see you next time.